Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com. Today we're going to take a look at the new three rail O scale Boston and Maine P4A steam locomotive from Weaver Models. The P4A was a 462 type steam locomotive. That means that it had four wheels up front, six drive wheels, and two wheels on the trailing truck. Number 3710 that you see here was the first of 10 P4As that were manufactured by Lima Locomotive Works for the B&M between 1934 and 1937. Now, if you look at the side of the locomotive, you'll see that this engine has a name, Peter Cooper. The story behind that is that when the B&M took delivery of the 10 new P4As in 1937, they held a naming contest where they allowed school children who lived in towns along the route of the B&M to name the 10 new locomotives. And so one lucky student got to name this engine Peter Cooper. Peter Cooper was a famous American industrialist, and he is known for designing and building the first steam locomotive in the U.S. So if you look at the plaque, you'll see the name is Peter Cooper, and below that you can see that it was named by Mabel Edson, who attended the Stone School in Gloucester, Massachusetts. So now let's talk about Weaver's rendition of the P4. Both the engine and the tender feature brass construction. The combined length of the engine and the tender is just under 23 inches. The combined weight is 6 pounds 15 ounces. This model has about 1 pound 6 ounces of pulling power and the minimum curve needed to operate this engine is 054. Under the hood, the engine is powered by one large flywheel motor and it also has a fan driven smoke unit. On the inside of the tender, you've got the electronics package that allows you to run the engine with Lionel's legacy command system as well as Lionel's classic TMCC command system. And you can also run the engine conventionally if you choose to do so. You've also got the electronics for the Lionel rail sounds package that provides the sound effects. And this engine does have the updated rail sounds module, so you've got much improved engine and crew talk sounds. As with all brass models, this engine has a lot of nice details and features, so let's go in for a closer look. Starting off at the front of the P4, the pilot area looks great. There's some nice hose detail here, a dummy scale coupler right here that's attached by a chain to a separately applied coupler cut bar. There's some nice step detail here and here, as well as on either side of the boiler. There's safety tread on the steps here, the walkway here, and the walkways up top, which you'll see in just a couple minutes. And then we've got some nice grab-on detailing here. Moving up, the front of the boiler is very well done with some nice rivet detailing all around. There are lighted number boards on either side of the operating headlight. There's a little swinging bell right here. And then on either side, we've got operating marker lights. As we start our journey down the side of the engine, you can see the great detail on these steps here, as well as the nice equipment behind it. And you can see some of the nice detailing on the cylinders here. The drive wheels and the running gear on the P4 look fantastic and they look even better when the engine is in motion. You'll see that in just a few minutes. The firebox area looks awesome. We've got nice rivet detail all around and some nice piping detail here. And the trailing truck is nicely detailed as well. The sides of the locomotive are very nicely done. We've got lots of add-on details on both sides. And there are also legible builder's plates on either side of the locomotive. The exterior of the cab is very well done. There's a nicely detailed window here and one on the other side as well. Both of the side windows have nice clear plastic inserts and there are a number of separately applied grab irons on this side as well as the other side. On the interior of the cab there are two hand painted crew figures and a very detailed back head with lots of hand painted valves and gauges. Let's take a look at the top of the locomotive. Up front we've got the smokestack and there's an operating fan driven smoke unit inside. And of course to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit you just pour the smoke fluid directly down the stack. Behind that we've got a nice whistle and some nice details back here. And then we've got a well done sand dome here. Moving back we've got the steam dome, some nice hand painted pop off valves here, a little dynamo right there, and then on top of the cab roof we've got a vent that opens up like that. If we take a look at the rear of the engine, you can see how nicely detailed the back head is here inside the cab. We've got some more separately applied grab irons and a couple windows back here. And then right here is the socket for the electrical tether coming from the tender. Here's a look at the underside of the engine. There are two pickup rollers here. There are traction tires on the last set of drivers and all of the drivers are sprung. 
If we take a look under the trailing truck on the engine, we can see the smoke unit control switch that allows you to turn the smoke unit on and off. And then we've got the Weaver builder's plate. And this is a nice touch that Weaver adds to all of their steam engines. And if we read it, we can see that this particular steam engine that I bought is number 36 out of 40 units that were made in this particular production run. That does it for the engine. Now let's take a look at the tender. Starting at the bottom, the truck side frames are metal and they're very nicely detailed. And then we've got some nice piping going along the bottom as well. And then up here, we've got the great Boston and Maine logo that's on both sides of the tender. And this is probably as good a time as any to talk about the paint job on this engine. You know, painting is really one of Weaver Model's strong points. And I've never seen anything come out of Weaver that has a paint job that's anything less than flawless. And this engine is no exception. It's absolutely perfect. On the top of the tender, we've got a real coal load. And then there's some nice detailing back here. And we've got this hatch that opens up to reveal the master volume control for the engine, as well as the TMCC run program switch. On the front of the tender, we've got some nice step detail down here, some separately applied grab irons on either side, nice casting details here, safety tread on the platform up here, and then here's the electrical tether that plugs into the engine. The back of the tender looks great. There are some separately applied steps right here, a separately applied metal coupler cut bar, as well as a ladder and several grab irons, and there's an operating backup light right here. This is the electrocoupler that can be thrown from the TMCC or Legacy remote. And I've said this before, but I really like the way that Weaver does the O-gauge couplers on their models. On every Weaver steam engine that I've ever seen, they always recess the coupler a little bit so that it doesn't stick out very much. Typically what you'll see with three rail O-scale models is that the big O-gauge coupler will stick out, you know, a half inch or an inch or so. And as a result, you get a very big gap between the tender and whatever cars you're pulling. And by recessing it like Weaver does, that closes that gap. You get a much more prototypical distance between the tender and the cars. And as a result, your train looks that much more realistic. Here's a look at the underside of the tender. There are two pickup rollers, one per truck. The speaker for the sound system is under this truck here. There's some nice add-on detailing here. And then just like the engine, there's a Weaver builder's plate that again identifies this engine as number 36 out of 40 engines that were made in this production run. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do before we start this thing up is BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. Well, in my opinion, the best feature on the new Weaver P4A is the sound effects package. And that's because this contains the updated Lionel Rail Sounds module that's now available from the Electric Railroad Company. Lionel finally decided to release some updated rail sounds for use by third parties. And so that means that Weaver and Atlas and Third Rail and a lot of the other players in the O-Scale market can now have access to more current sounds that don't sound like they were made 10 or 15 years ago. That's a great thing. I'm really happy about it. So in my opinion, the best feature is the updated sound effects package. All right, let's go ahead and start her up. Okay, first up, let's give a listen to the whistle. And here's the bell. Okay, now let's listen to some of the new crew chat sounds. I know some of you guys don't like crew chat sounds, that's okay, but I think they're fun, so let's give them a listen. And if you happen to own any recently made Lionel products, you may recognize some of these crew talk sounds because Rail Sounds is a Lionel product, of course. How's that track look? Are we clear? Over. Affirmative, the track is yours. Over. Roger that. All clear. Out. Dispatcher here. You're cleared onto the main. Over. Roger that. All clear. Out. Dispatcher here. Please hold for track orders. Over. Roger that. Out. 
The last sound we're going to check out is the cylinder steam release sound. All right, let's go ahead and roll it out. Okay, that about wraps it up for this review. This is a fantastic model, and it's really par for the course when it comes to Weaver. They put out really beautiful stuff. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, the retail price is just under $1,250, and you can get one from your local Weaver dealer, or you can get one directly from Weaver. You can go to their website at www.weavermodels.com, or you can give them a call at 570-473-9434. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time. To discuss this model or any other O-Gage trains, and to meet other O-Gage modelers, check out the O-Gage Railroading Magazine online forum at ogrforum.ogagerr.com.